Hi there, I'm Yvonne, your friendly neighborhood gardener, and I'm going to help you get started with growing your own food. Today, we're going to start with the very basics of sowing and growing. Little disclaimer, I'm not a professional gardener, but rather starting one myself since about 2019. If you're interested in more advanced techniques, subscribe to our channel because we will be uploading more advanced and well-researched videos in the future. Now let's get to it. Where do food babies come from? What came first, the chickpea or the eggplant? Seriously though, if you want to grow your own foods, you're going to need some seeds. You can buy a lot of seeds online, but I do recommend buying from a trusted brand rather than from a big overseas supplier. Not all seeds have an equal chance of germinating and cheap seeds tend to be the runt of the litter. Of course, you can buy seeds from your local garden store or from specialized stores as well. There is an option of using seeds from organic produce bought at the store. But since those plants are often bred for mass production, they might not work well in a small garden environment. Not all seeds are the same. Besides from the seed quality, almost every fruit or vegetable comes in a large seed variety. For example, I currently have three basil varieties in my garden. A standard Italian basil, a dark purple Thai basil, and a sweet basil. Seeds need two things to germinate, heat and moisture. Seeds won't germinate if it's too cold or if they don't get water. This is also why you should store your seeds cool and dry so that they don't germinate. Some seeds, like carrots and cabbages, can be sown directly into the earth, whereas others, like peppers and tomatoes, prefer to spend some time indoors. And then there's peas. For peas, it's best to soak them in some water and then germinate them on a paper towel. Let's explore these three options. First, let's talk about seeds that you sow directly into the earth, which is the case for most leafy greens and root vegetables. For example, carrots, fennel, spinach and lettuce. On your seed pack, you can find the suggested distance for sowing your seeds. Beets and carrots don't require a lot of distance, so you can pack them tightly. Fennel, on the other hand, grows quite big, so make sure that you have enough space between the seeds. Try to think of how big you want them to grow, and at least double that distance. Because the root system needs that space to grow and get nutrients. If you pack your plants too tightly, the roots will compete over nutrients, and they won't grow as big as you'd like them to. Lots of peas do well if you germinate them before planting them. The best way to do this is to soak them for half a day until they are soft and ready, and then lay them on a paper towel. One reason that this is a good idea is that birds, and especially ducks, will eat your seeds if you plant them in the ground. You can also skip soaking them and just put them on a moist paper towel. I found that this works just as well. As soon as they've started to grow roots, you can put them in pots. Or if you want, you can wait for the plant to digest the peas so the birds won't harm them before you plant them outside. Most seeds though, you might prefer to pre-sow. This counts for sure for peppers, zucchinis, pumpkins, tomatoes, and eggplants. The benefits of pre-sowing is that you give your plants a stable environment to grow up in, especially if you're growing plants that usually don't grow in your environment because of the weather. A lack of wind and rain, a good amount of sunlight, a stable temperature, and regular moisture give your plants everything they need to grow strong. So I grow my seeds in these little growing pots with some extra fluffy and nutrient-rich soil. You can add some vermiculite to make your soil even fluffier. But I also know plenty of people who simply grow their plants in a tray like this. So ideally, you will place your seeds in pots with soil and put them in the warmest spot of your home, watering them regularly to make sure that the soil never dries out. If you're using a greenhouse or mini greenhouse, beware to air it out if it gets too hot. Over 90 degrees Fahrenheit, your seeds will die. Some seeds start producing a plant in a couple of days, whereas others, like eggplants, can take weeks. Once they grow, you might see the seed caps stuck on the leaves, like is the case with melons or squash. This is fine, the plant is just using the nutrients to grow. As the plants grow, usually they first produce an initial set of leaves. This is great! In many plants, you know they are ready to plant into bigger pots when the second set of leaves starts to grow, 
or when the roots are starting to show through the holes in the bottom of your pots. When this is the case, but the plants don't seem strong enough to plant outside, you can transition them to bigger pots. Most plants are fine with this if you do it carefully and if you have your new pot with moistened earth at the ready for a quick transfer. I read in another gardener's blog that she holds her breath for as long as the transfer takes, because that is similar to what you're doing to the plants. Pumpkins though are a little tricky. Root damage will seriously harm them and decrease productivity. So for pumpkins, it's better to just sow a single seed in a bigger pot so you never have to transplant them except for the one time you move them outside. If you're planning on keeping your plant in a pot indefinitely, make sure you give it ample space to grow. Think about the end size of the plant when you plan for pots or be ready to change pots regularly as your plant grows. Felt fabric pots keep the roots from circling and provide optimal moisture regulation. But terracotta pots are also great. We use these lekka pebbles, called hydrograin in the Netherlands, to help with moisture regulation for plants that we keep in pots indefinitely. Some of the plants that are suitable for pot life include peppers, herbs and small fruit like strawberry. We've kept tomatoes and cucumbers in pots once, but that didn't work out. I also have two coffee lime plants and a lemon tree that I grew from a store-bought lemon. I have no idea if it will ever get to producing lemons, but I like the experiment. And it looks pretty, as the leaves and thorns are very strong and glossy. Since this spring, we have a plot, so we have plenty of space for planting outside. But if you don't have an outside area, don't worry, I'm posting a video about growing your food in small spaces soon. Just like when you're transitioning your plants to bigger pots, you need to do it fast. Always dig a large enough hole and add some water before taking your plant out of the pot and planting it. I'm making a video about planning where to plant which plants and managing a plot, so keep your eyes peeled for that one. For now, let's just focus on the basics. And let's start with protection. Some plants require protection if they're interesting to birds or sensitive to insect infestations. Strawberries and other fruit, peas and young cabbage plants often need a bird net. The blue ones are apparently the best, as birds don't like that color. But in general, the most important thing is that the holes are small enough for the birds not to fit through. Some plants require protection from insects. There are fleece nets that let through light and moisture, but stop insects like cabbage flies. Unfortunately, there's not always something that you can do against pests. In our area, we go crazy over the aphids. We've tried ladybugs, spraying them with water or other mixtures, planting smelly plants like garlic in the area, and even more, but nothing worked. We've started using an eco-spray specifically against aphids. It's not the most ecologically responsible solution, but it works for us for now. Tomatoes, squashes, melons, cucumbers, beans, and peas. These plants just keep on growing. And if you don't manage them, their tangles will grow all over your garden and make it impossible to harvest or plant anything else. You'll need a trellis to support these plants. By using plant clamps, you can then help guide them where you want them to grow. There are so many ways to trellis your plants that I think I'll make a video about it in the future and I'll post it here. For now, I've added some resources down below. Gardening can be a fun hobby, but it takes some planning and quite a bit of your time. The biggest time investments of our plot are planting the garden and removing weeds. But if you enjoy getting your hands into the earth and feeling closer to nature, I highly recommend it. It's been well over a month since we shot this video and we've been enjoying our massive harvest of zucchinis, strawberries, beets, lettuce and more. We've also had some plant losses due to a very aggressive Phytophthora spreading at the allotment. It's hard to lose a plant to pests or disease, but it's one of those things that we can learn from. So hopefully we can do better next time. For one, we'll build a greenhouse for our tomatoes. And we'll add another plot next year, so we can plant fruit trees. We're still very happy with the garden, and we have more harvest than we can eat, freeze or pickle. These were the basics of sowing and growing your own food. We hope you found this useful, and if you did, let us know. Feel free to discuss your tips, tricks and things that we could have been doing differently in the comments. We also appreciate questions and comments that help us decide what kind of video to shoot next. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you soon.